some of you know, some of you may have heard about Radix therapy, Alexander Lovin's bioenergetics, primal therapy, body therapy, body psychotherapy, and so on. And um, all these therapies and many others that uh, were developed later belong to a group of psychotherapies uh, that is called uh, deep feeling therapies. And my opinion is that the primal theory and the primal therapy has a central role in, um, in this group of therapies. Primal therapy was developed in during the late 60s when uh, a psychologist Arthur Janov and a psychotherapist noticed a phenomena um, that he was writing about uh, observing and um, making sense of it for a few years and in 1970 he published a book called The Primal Scream. Uh, later on, Janov wrote many other books, more than a dozen of books. Some of them are The Anatomy of Mental Illness, The Feeling Child, The Primal Revolution, The Primal Man, The Prisoners of Pain, The, Bi the Biology of Love, The Primal Healing, and so on. Primal therapy changed over the years, but the nucleus of the theory stayed the same. And I like when a theory has its nucleus, and the rest of the theory is organized in concentrical circles around the nucleus. And the nucleus of primal therapy is about needs pain and feelings. Art Janov and his colleagues conducted an extensive research in primal therapy with even with uh, an independent observers and of course they confirmed that uh, what the theories talking about. Um, my personal experience uh, of the therapy at the primal center of uh, in Los Angeles confirms completely my expectations and the theory of primal therapy. Hundreds of accounts of clients all around the world also confirm the power of this therapy. Not all clients succeed in any therapy and also not all clients succeed in primal therapy. And why is that? Why do some people make it and some don't in primal therapy is, can be a subject of uh, another video. Um, the, ther the therapy allows different modifications, modalities and styles as long as the nucleus is preserved. And now I'm going to say something about the nucleus of the primal theory and the primal therapy. At the very center of the therapy, of the theory, are needs. Um, needs of a human being from conception till death. Of course that these uh, early needs, uh, needs of a fetus, newborn child, children, these needs are crucial and formative uh, because um, we all know about the importance of early 
early learning and um, of course if you are a human being who who is born then uh, the first impressions of the world of people of yourself are going to be um, the most important ones so um, Janov is talking about needs in general uh, needs that uh, fetus, newborn child and children may have and of course uh, some of these needs are physiological, physical and some of them are emotional and uh, if we talk about uh, the needs of a fetus and a newborn child then uh, we uh, the Arthur Janov is cautious to call it emotional needs because uh, um, the part of the brain that is developed at that time is um, a brainstem so a baby cannot have real emotions they develop a little bit later and of course that not all needs are emotional but most of the clients that I've seen in my life as a psychotherapist and most of the cases that Jano is um, talking about uh, most uh, accounts in, in his books uh, are related to emotional needs and that's why my modification of primal therapy is called emotional therapy when people start to talk about these feelings and they approach, they come close to their pain, they become emotional. So this emotional reaction actually uh, made me call my approach emotional method. Um, okay, so if, a ch if an emotion, if a, if a need is um, systematically not fulfilled if a child suffers and, and for not receiving what he needs uh, for example he might um, or she might need uh, someone to talk to and there is no one uh, parents are not not responsive um, the child may lack touch the child may lack um, gentleness the child may lack um, interest of their parents in them so neglect is uh, pain a newborn child can um, be stressed during the birth because the birth was something was wrong with the birth maybe the umbilical cord was around the neck for too long maybe there was um, a lack of oxygen um, if the umbilical cord is cut prematurely um, maybe there was some pressure on the body during the birth the feeling that uh, something is stopping them from going out uh, if a mother smokes or takes drugs then the feeling of some toxicity may uh, appear and so on so there is a plethora of uh, situations that uh, uh, come down to not fulfilling child's needs and uh, if these needs are not fulfilled for uh, some time and there is this critical time there is a critical time that the need must be fulfilled otherwise uh, the feeling of pain for not fulfilling need is repressed so the, the pain is repressed and the, f and the need is repressed and this is the beginning of neurosis this is the beginning of neurosis when your uh, natural 
uh, physiological and emotional needs are um, not fulfilled and the feeling of pain that comes with this unfulfillment uh, so everything is repressed um, and then after that repression come other needs um, that needs to be fulfilled and there is other situations that uh, also may result in repression and so there is a compounding of pains and compounding of of repressed needs and so uh, as this uh, repression becomes bigger and bigger the child um, has difficulty in continuing to to be real and to to maintain his um, mental health so in, at some point children or maybe adolescents or maybe adult people uh, when they have enough stress compounded and uh, um, accumulated in their system when there is uh, so much pain anxiety um, repressed needs accumulated in the system then the symptoms appear and all symptoms are deriv derivatives of uh, pain so they are a result of pain so the therapy obviously consists of uh, uh, going backward so you start from uh, present day stress and uh, difficult situations with your boss with your colleagues with your wife with your children with uh, someone on the street whatever and then um, clients talk about these situations and the therapist helps them uh, connect to earlier feelings that are very similar to this that they have at the moment um, about these uh, present day situations and uh, during the weeks and months and years of therapy clients uh, um, learn how to feel instead of repress and this is a subtle skill that uh, uh, any successful client must learn in order to undo his neurosis and um, so therapy is neurosis in reverse as Jano said um, so after a few years of therapy some clients uh, may come to their feelings around birth and may feel these feelings around birth um, these are not visual uh, memories they are often uh, body body memories uh, of these uh, things that happen during the birth and by resolving birth and even some uh, some uh, pains before birth uh, clients uh, some clients uh, really uh, resolve uh, the main topics the main symptoms they had all their life um, so not all clients go to so deep and they don't need to go so deep because maybe their birth and uh, this period before birth was not so traumatic but um, and they still have uh, benefits from resolving uh, later pains during their childhood so uh, why is it, why is the why is primal therapy so successful because um, uh, when you resolve uh, your feelings early feelings around unfulfilled needs then you connect for the first time or maybe for the second time because once upon a time you were connected to these uh, needs and feelings but now you have to do it once more to connect to the to real self 
to your real feelings, to your real pain, and feel the f the pain for the first time. What you're doing for the first time for the first time is you feel the pain for the first time. But uh, this uh, <clears throat> feeling pain for the first time has the sense of coming home. You as if you came home again. You're back to yourself, to your original needs, and people feel. Uh, that the tension is resolved and they feel like uh, becoming what they once were um, so there is no development uh, of um, of uh, of a person during the therapy it's more coming to what you really are what you really were at the beginning so coming home that's the feeling of most people explain and uh, um, describe uh, so <clears throat> you can people all around the world practitioners all around the world really use many of what Arthur Janov said but they never write about that they never speak about that they just use what Jano discovered and uh, there are so many therapies uh, with different names that incorporate what Arthur Jano discovered and they use it and they don't mention Arthur Jano uh, and I don't think it's fair I think uh, we should uh, talk about this guy who really um, in my opinion uh, revolutionized psychotherapy after Freud because Freud uh, discovered something very important the importance of childhood uh, and repression but uh, he missed so many things and he made so many mistakes in the theory and I think that uh, Arthur Jano eventually uh, uh, made real good sense uh, made sense of what is going on in psychotherapy and what really helps and um, what doesn't help so much so this is not uh, denying the value of counseling Carl Rogers uh, psychoanalysis and many other therapies because uh, many other therapies really help people but uh, Jano did something more he really uh, brought psychotherapy to a, a next level to another level of help um, that is uh, much more deeper and uh, uh, it rocks as a client said the therapy rocks um, it goes much deeper into the personal history and resolve much deeper feelings in a much profound way and that's why the results of many clients are so good uh, that's all for today thank you very much